Hello. This is going to be the first in a series of videos that will address a question. The question of can we use overtones and the possibility of hearing and intensifying overtones to create a more beautiful and consistent sound. I'd like first to talk about a clarinetist that some of you may know and others may not. And his name was Ralph McLean. Ralph McLean was born in 1906, studied with Gaston Amelin from the Paris Conservatory uh, in both Boston and Paris. And McLean, through his passion for sound and beauty of the clarinet, became principal clarinet of the Philadelphia Orchestra from 1943 to 1951. He was known basically for his gorgeous sound, uh, which became legendary, but also not just his robust and beautiful sound, but for his consistency of sound, because McLean when you listen to his recordings, he sounded the same from the early recordings around 1935 until his last year of playing before his death in 1951. So 35 to 50, the sound is totally consistent. And that always interested me. I've known about McLean since I was a little kid, but um, this consistency of sound was, was very interesting. Listening to McLean's recordings over time, I heard something that reminded me of the time that I spent with Harold Wright, who was McLean's student. I believe Wright studied with him for about six years. When Wright played in front of me, I remember hearing a sound within his sound that seemed to give his tone a three-dimensional quality. I wished I had asked him about it then, but there was always the problem of, of being afraid to ask, what, what are you doing? And I don't understand. I think most students are like that. They have the same problem. When listening attentively to McLean, one can hear those other sounds and more. When I remember my early student days of uh, uh, studying in Los Angeles, my teacher, Gary Foster, gave me a book by Keith Stein called The Art of Clarinet Playing. And I devoured this book, not literally, but um, I read it. And on page 32, Stein talks about the different subjective descriptions of sound, mellowness, warmth, edge, etc. And then he hits his reader with a single paragraph dedicated to a scientific imperative. I'd like to read that. So after he goes through all of these categories of sound, shape, body, depth, color, glow, etc., he says, scientific Sound analysis has shown that any tone quality is determined by the number and intensity of various overtones, partials. For example, if the teacher plays a fundamental tone, such as the lowest F, bringing it up in intensity and then tapering down perceptibly, the sixth partial, fifth overtone, third space C, can be distinctly heard in the fundamental low F. This is important. Once the student can hear it in the teacher's tone, he should face into a corner of the room and try to distinguish it in his own tone. Having once heard these overtones and realizing that they play a major part in improving his tone quality, his or her tone quality, he will be excited and happy to bring those overtones out in high relief. 
I find that to be incredibly interesting because that says, and this book was written in 1953, that it is possible for a student and necessary to hear the 12th overtone in your, in your fundamental tone, no matter which one you're playing, and learn how to do that, learn how to hear those tones, and then bring them out, as he says, in high relief. That is so interesting. And he also uh, says at the end of that paragraph, a beautiful tone results from the perfect balance of the above musical and scientific characteristics of sound. How simple. So the mystery tones I heard from Wright Live and McLean on record of the 12th overtone above the fundamental pitch. Every tone played by the clarinet or any other instrument contains a major triad that is sounding at the same moment as the fundamental. With instruments such as the flute and oboe, the first and second octaves are the strongest overtones. With the clarinet, the 12th and 17th are predominant in the tone because of the design of the instrument. It is these tones within the clarinet sound that give the clarinet its characteristic sweetness and depth. So that's basically going to be the first video, sort of a teaser. And the second video is going to be very interesting because I'm going to show you exactly what you can do to learn how to play or to learn how to hear these overtones while you're playing. This will give you the characteristic sweetness and depth, as I said, of the clarinet sound, and it will heighten your own concept of sound.